Interpol is a truly global organization working to turn back crime. The journey began 100 years ago. In 1914, at the first International Criminal Police Congress in Monaco, an idea was born. If police could cooperate internationally, the world would be safer. Plans were interrupted by the First World War, but in 1923, Interpol was officially created in Vienna by 20 countries. Special units were set up to handle fingerprints, drugs, fugitives, fake money, and forged passports. These remain core activities today. To facilitate cooperation, each member country agreed to establish an Interpol office known today as a National Central Bureau. In 1935, an independent radio network gave police a private communications channel. But with the advent of the Second World War, the organization ceased to function. And the Prime Minister said that he had to tell, I have to tell you that we are now at war. After the war, Interpol started rebuilding with a new headquarters in Paris and created its emblematic tool, the Red Notice, to alert member countries to wanted persons. Red notices are vital for tracking down international fugitives and were the first in a color-coded series of alerts. Interpol's membership grew steadily as more countries saw the need for police cooperation. Cooperation with the United Nations goes from strength to strength. UN recognition in 1971 reinforced Interpol's status, while the organization's role in combating terrorism is highlighted through a joint Interpol-UN special notice created in 2005 and a UN Security Council resolution from 2014. In 1982, a special commission was set up to ensure the organization's processing of data respected the rights of individuals. In 1989, Interpol relocated its General Secretariat headquarters from Paris to Lyon and went on to open seven regional bureaus as well as representative offices at the United Nations and the European Union. Also from Boston to Los Angeles, the terrorist attacks of 9-11 marked a new era of terrorism and a turning point for Interpol. In response, a command and coordination center was open to provide round-the-clock support to member countries, while a global communication system called I-24-7 allowed police to exchange messages securely and to access Interpol's databases in real time. A database of stolen and lost travel documents was also created, helping to detect criminals trying to cross borders. Databases are at the heart of Interpol's work, holding records on stolen items from vehicles to works of art and crime data such as fingerprints and DNA profiles. From this time, Interpol became more operational, deploying response teams to assist national police forces in the field. Law enforcement operations target the wide range of crimes the organization is actively fighting today crimes against children, trafficking in human beings, counterfeit goods, illicit medicines, drugs, environmental crime, tracking down fugitives, and more. Interpol now has 190 member countries, all committed to making the world a safer place. But crimes keep evolving, and today's new threat is cybercrime. The Interpol Global Complex for Innovation in Singapore will better support the world's police in tackling the challenges that lie ahead. Fighting crime could be much more effective if the world's citizens could play a part.
the Turn Back Crime campaign aims to make this a reality as Interpol looks to the future.